Thank you. All right. Um, we started by discussing the last one. We discussed on contract and um, contractual. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. On contractual processes in the oil and gas industry. We talked about with how companies require for position even on the option of or the different forms of contract that we have uh, with, with uh, an organization. And then um, we went on to all right. Um, now we want to also talk about other areas in the contract. We we'll talk about bidding. We we'll talk about bidding. We we'll talk about tender. We we'll talk about the technical and commercial aspects of tender and the rest of it. Uh, involved in um, contracting, you know, and there's something I needed to quickly mention. I'll just run through before I come into um, Petrodon Economics, my uh, main topic for, for discussion today. So, so, you know, I remember I mentioned something about um, I mentioned something about um, contractor qualification and all that. Okay, contractual qualification or pre qualification. One of the things that every organization will have or before giving the contract to the company is the competence results apart from other factors in the same um your 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 um maybe you presented your technical documents and all that also then we also presented the commercial we also want to see the um crew the, the, the people the staff the hand that you are going to be using to execute such jobs so we want to see their qualifications their competencies and um, um, usually in the technical that is always presented that is usually presented that they are seeking or for the cognitive experience. The cognitive experience is about the whole the work experience and um, competencies of the workforce. So from the operation person or the head of the team that you have made, that the contractor is going to be using to so the last in the team that the contractor is going to be using they want to see their competency, you know. Um, Another thing that they also do is to also check when, by the time they are mobilizing, there's also the checks that will be put in place, especially with respect to health, their yeah, health check. Okay. Now that we are even having this coronavirus and the nature of the virus, some notifications will even be made also because through the last month, in the way it has always been after this era, when this kind of thing happens. That has affected the whole world. So, as you can, as you already know, some health policies are already being put in place, are already been passed into law, you know, just because of the pandemic. All right. Now, <clears throat> as I was saying, the crew that is going to be executing that um, project will have to be thoroughly checked. What you're seeing right now is an example of um, what one of the ISCs used for their contractor pro competency review. We call they they call that the form G is a standard in with the standard track. And if you can maybe in short or look closely there is a bit um time it's actually a spreadsheet that is converted to this Right, so you discover that you have, you have something like you said, looking at the this one, consider the different safety requirements. You know, so this is under safety, the different safety requirements that is needed 
for this kind of for this organization. Now the name of the company is stated in Martin Emmanuel Community Service Limited, their address and all that stuff. So then you're going to have from the project supervisor, we put their names there and down to maybe it's an electrical team for me. So this, this is more of an electrical team, the instrumental lead, the electrical lead, the technical lead. If it's a civil team, the designations will also be stated there, the years of experience, then their qualifications or the their experience is with respect to safety. You know, minimum safety training that are required of them. For each of these offices, there are minimum safety training that are required. I'm just using this as an example. Okay, now, these competencies will be stated. So they will have, they will need to have all these um, requirements for them to eventually be. For them, be, be uh, allowed to mobilize. When we talk about mobilization, we mean that you have now be given the permission for the, the necessary uh, permission or permit to go about the job that you need to do or the task for the project. Okay? But any of these that don't have it will not be um, allowed to go for such um, task or all right, so you see different qualifications. There are years of experience, they say they did fire fighting. That one, a lot of them, almost all of them need to have it. You know, the one that doesn't have it, it's usually have a particular qualification painted in red and you have no the one that has it just in green. So, yes, if it's not applicable for such things, it's you know. If you have too much red, 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 it means the first person doesn't have most of the necessary requirements for each of them. I see it is able to different sections too. All right, so this is just from an organization of the um, qualification measures that they look at. Another thing they also do is that they carry out audits as part of the qualification. They audit your records, your safety. And records also very important is always at the forefront of every pre qualification process. Your um, quality control and quality assurance processes, your uh, administrative process too, and all that. So, a lot of this make up the contractual pre qualification process. All right, so we're going to <clears throat> Petroleum economics. Petroleum economics as a core discussion for today. And then we look at an overview of economics and economic analysis as the vital part to the success of an um, of the oil and gas industry. You know, we've talked about petroleum which involved exploration and then okay. apart from that. There are other areas in oil and gas um, processes, even just an aspect of um, upstream. It's just an aspect of the upstream. We have the midstream, we have the downstream, and the low stream. So when you go further, you're going to see that. But generally, you get that upstream and downstream. Now, all the stream, whatever stream, you put on that up, make it down. The only uh, the different projects at one time or the other, or different um, things that we involve com commerce or finance, you understand that. So it is important that we take those the economic and the economic analysis seriously, the oil and gas industry, right? Because we have two types of projects in the oil and gas. When we're talking about projects, we have two types in terms of economic economical view. You know, we have the expense project and we have the capital project. We have what the expense project and the capital project. The expense project talks about projects that maintain reserves or production. 
，有的我们一看，当我们拿去打听，为啥操作不标准？哎，就是说明什么？他不讲，一说我打听，我说去，为啥说？这个不标准，那就他不讲不准。我我我有我去，嗯，我有我去，嗯，听，我只要打听。That becomes an extensive project. You understand that now? So, um, something that is at the heart of like drilling, for instance, the process of drilling and exploration and all that, those are like capital projects. Okay? But when you now maybe um, read maintenance or um, a kind of read maintenance, If you can hear me, if you can hear me, when you try to speak, you can hear me. or close station um, upgrade or your site those are what expense project right so
Um, issues just to make the technical challenge when it's been sorted out. All right, so we have, as I was saying, I've explained that expense project and capital project. So, an example of expense project is um, like a process station um, upgrade or a facility upgrade, like a reservoir or a um, uh, uh, refinery upgrade, for instance, you know, um, maintenance. You know, and the rest of the maintenance, repairs, and the rest. Those are, or even replacement, those are more of um, expense projects. All right. But one more thing. I think maybe you can see my screen and you can hear me clearly too. I want to believe you can hear me. If I your meet, please, if you can hear me, indicate to All right. Okay. I think you can hear me. All right. All right. So, as I was saying, as my question. Let's go. Let's move on. So, for. Um, the question to ask ourselves is what is the importance of this uh, economic evaluation in um, project in, in oil and gas project? Number one, it's important because it will help us to integrate all technical analysis into the communication. Okay, now all technical analysis, you know, some technical analysis. You know, um, in terms of construction or um, work for EPCM or construction or procurement construction or EPCI, construction and installation, engineering management, procurement construction or installation, as it is, maybe, you know, these are technical areas that. We analyze now. We analyze it as well. All right, so now instead of constructing the uh, funding, um, just having a <clears throat> for this location, we may need 10 fire hydrant, uh, hydrant or hydrant fail installation in our fire water line for prevention of fire or protection against fire. I mean, everybody. Happen to be directed in the trial, you can maybe analyze it technically that five hydrant head may not be enough cover for such area. Another thing is maybe like the installation of um, of gas monitor. Maybe such facilities need automated gas monitoring. So you don't, it's not until you have an um, or a designated gas monitor, you may not be going around to conduct that. Um, gas monitoring, you know, that the or gas test or for gas testing, you know, check around for the possibility of any loose gas, like in leakage of gas or loss of containment, so that you can quickly tackle before they the fire. You know. But we don't have to do that manually. Technically, we may have recommended that so we have to care. But we are weak. And economic value um, for um, implication and economic implication of such installation or modifications. Okay, so for us to be able to integrate everything together, this technical analysis into recommendation, we need also to evaluate the economic value. You look at the whole cost, you know, your EBA. PBA means uh, cost benefit analysis. Right? So we evaluate the recommendation. Another important is that the evaluation of recommendations for profit potential is an economic analysis. Yeah. No problem. No organization wants to go into a venture without uh, looking at making profit when you are not an NGO or a non 
profit making organization you know so we are saying the economy is also going to be in this case then we also have the driving to make a final recommendation to management based on technical and economic evaluation so economics is typically the focal point for all technical work that is also not now what do we mean by that all technical works are going to be no matter how complex or how simple they might be you know economics remains the focal point we need to look at it. what is the cost of this, what benefit do we have in this, oh, that's what I meant by the cost benefit analysis, all right, relative to other options, what other options are there, are there other better options that may be less cost intensive or maybe not so much different in cost but more durable you know, that's to also look at the durability and the integrity of, of such recommendations. Okay. So overall, we have I believe you can see the screen um company. Now the overall flow of funds we have it in three major areas. We have the absorbing funds, then we have the project, and then we have the generating the aspects for generating money. What do we need? <clears throat> the absorbing funds we are looking at loans or loan capital and the rest of them. At that point, we have more of the injection of funds, you know, and putting in that's the investment aspect. Like, so, mm -hmm. Everything is a project, you know, whether it could be loans. For capital, or it could be even the stakeholders or shareholders and friends, you know, the owners of the company putting their resources together and using to fund the project so that is put into the project. So the project at the center of it, and then we now have the aspect that generates money at the end of the project. We are expecting that. Whatever has been invested, invested, there will now be something for them. This is what we are saying. We put in money for it, a lot of money goes into the installation and the, the drilling for it. That is drilling, which is related to this cost that we are taking. Right? A lot of money is put into the act of the process of exploration and drilling, or the purpose of drilling. We want to bring the oil that is in the reserve for. The oil we have beneath the earth that's inside the earth crust. We want to bring it to the surface, the oil and the gas. All right. Now, in the process, we end up having gas. We also end up having what? The oil. Now, that product in itself, the moment we start having much of that production, then we have several options at our disposal to start generating money. The product can be processed, the looking. To take away the debris and it can be sold off, like we do in Nigeria, typically, where we do more of selling of our food oil and less of refinery. And then eventually, the oil will sold to refiners and we buy, we start buying uh, the product to that table because of our consumption mentality. We don't look at food processing. We want to invest in the company. Some of us can get the refinery that's already been made and constructed, and we hope that will help to turn a lot of things around in Nigeria also. Now, as I was saying, at that point, we are having the sales of the crude oil that you stand looking at. Lately, the crude oil in China in the international market, the value dropped drastically. Um, that has its own impact on countries that really depend on crude oil as their um, for their activity or their 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 major source. Okay, as Nigeria, yeah. So that we have a very negative impact on the economy. That's what happens. But when there's a boom, we have 
the price rising in the international market. So those are selling with a lot of money. That's why we've had Nigeria make a lot of money from auction in the past. Unfortunately, we still are very much involved in sharing of our tax instead of refining them or processing them. Yeah, invest much in our classes. We don't have a few that we are not able to run the education. Yes. We want gas pipelines for our 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 generation. Yeah. We have too much. We have too much. Too much. Too much. The amount of gas we produce in Nigeria is enough to power. Nigeria and many other countries around Nigeria, surrounding Nigeria. Yeah. All right. So these are the three sections of the overall cash flow, the absorbing funds, the projects, and then the generating money. Then it's access, and you could also go into processing that or eventually you sell the dry products or the extractions from the crude oil, you know. So you know, that, that helps to repay the loan. You know, that's why the arrow goes that way, loan repayment. Then you also have shareholders profit, which from there you have the dividends that are gotten from the investment. Okay, so it's a whole, it's a complete um, circle I'm looking at this. So when we are calculating the project cash flow, what are the things we can for? Generally, Cash flow is described as revenue minus expenditure. All right, revenues, your total revenue minus your expenditure. If you see what your cash flow is. So when you look at the revenue item, payment that have been received, you look at the gross revenues from sales of nitrocarbon, whether that is or liquid or what have you. Then you also have payment. For, farm, for farming out projects or part of projects, you know, those payments to something. Then for the expenditure, we have expenditure items, right? or for the capex, capex means like capital expenditure. Okay, you also have, have yeah, capex, you have the X, then you have um, government state. Government state, you're talking about royalties and um, taxes, all right? Then for capex, you're looking at capital expenditure, the money that has been spent on maybe assets with lifetime, like in this case now platforms or facilities or even the wealth themselves, like I earlier explained. Then the OPEX is talking about the operating expenditures for assets with lifetime. That one is usually less than one year. For example, insurance or maintenance on the rest of it. Then royalties, the taxes that you have to pay, or um, the, that's all of them fall under government aid. Whether the royalties to like the traditional rulers, there are projects, most of the projects that we've been involved in, before you even start the project, you have to go see, um, what they say, you did pay for matching ground. Mm -hmm. You have to go see the traditional rulers in that area. Have an agreement to then pay them some royalties or collect skills and the rest of them. Also, even the Nigerian constitution recognizes that the, the what we call the local concept act is also is something that is applicable. And that's the law usually most like you have to engage at least if you use a percentage the ratio of about um, 30 to 70 percent ration for the workforce so we must engage indigenous from, from that location or locality for your project which is very very um, important to do that all right this is an we are silent i need to take screenshots of this before uh happening and we are going to be explaining these terms living children and um, contractor for qualification process, then arrow SQ. Then also the translation on the differences between 
service contract and production sharing contract. This is production, production sharing contract. Production sharing contract and discuss expensive in the important engineer. Yes, discuss expensively on the importance of evaluation of petroleum project. The economic evaluation engineer. of petroleum project. Yes, yes. I can hear you. I'm rounding up, I'm rounding up in two minutes. Okay, so I'm going to be taking screenshots of that. So I can quickly talk about uh, mental. So is that cash flow is equal to what? Uh, cash flow is equal to cash inflow and cash outflow. All right. Now, different things that we need to talk about. Okay. Now, let's next slide. We'll read stuff ahead of the class. Read up on revenues, investment, expenses, and federal income tax. All right. The formula that um, Relate them. Let me just look at and then in terms of investment, this one will have bonuses and it's because I have explained all the same way. But there's a formula that relates them, and this is it. So our net cash is usually fortune. Yes. Is equal to the arrow minus i minus t minus s i t. All right, we we'll continue from here in our next class. Please ensure you submit your assignment on or before Sunday 6 p.m. Thank you very much for your time. See you.